Season 11 is here, and we have one of the coolest looking legends added to the game, Ash. What's up guys, it's Valued, and I appreciate you guys for sticking with me after our break last week. Personally, I was in the middle of a move, so I decided to take a little bit of time off the channel and make sure we were recharged for Season 11. That being said, we're back and ready to grind, and I'm glad to see you guys here too. Back to the topic at hand, by the end of this video, you will know everything that you need to know to start mastering Ash. whether you're looking to take over your normal games or dominate ranked on the brand new map, Stormpoint. She's an awesome legend with a ton of flexibility, so let's get right into it. First, let's do a quick overview of Ash's abilities, and then we'll take a deeper dive into the playstyle and tactics that you need to implement into your gameplay. Starting off, we have Ash's passive, Marked for Death, which allows her to interact with enemy death boxes and mark the players who killed them on the map. This ability can be great for scouting out an area that you and your squad are coming into. If you see any death boxes, you can double check how far away the killers are and give yourself some comfort. Or better yet, you can hunt them down and take both teams loot for yourself. While this ability requires you to find death boxes to get any use out of it, it can come in really clutch when you're trying to find yourself some KP or just scouting out some kills in pubs. For Ash's tactical ability, she throws out an arc snare, tethering and damaging the closest enemy. While it only does about 20 damage to shields or 10 to health, the snare lasts for about three seconds on the enemy that it tethers to. This can be a great tool for slowing down an enemy push or when initiating a fight. Keep in mind, the arc snare does last for seven seconds if it doesn't hit anyone. So you can use it to zone or even just block off a doorway in certain situations. The flight pattern of this ability is in a perfectly straight line, so it's pretty easy to throw. However, it does have a pretty slow travel speed, and if you don't directly impact someone while it's in the air, it won't land. So what's important here is to make sure to try to use it at enemies' feet, or nearby walls or rocks. Look to connect to a surface close to them, and it will make your accuracy with this ability so much better. This aspect of this ability makes high ground really useful when you're throwing it, as it will allow you to reliably land at people's feet. While the cooldown is sort of long at 25 seconds, if you're patient with its placement and find good uses for it every single time, it can bring a lot of value to any team. All right, now it's time for the coolest part of Ash's kit by far, her ultimate phase breach. This ability allows Ash to tear open a one-way portal to location in her line of sight. Think about a Wraith portal, but with a shorter range and she can open it from a long way away instantly. While the distance isn't really anything crazy, the speed at which you can portal to the location is. This portal opens up almost instantly, and the only real delay is the brief moment of traveling through the void. Unlike Race Portal, which requires her to run to the target location and put her own life on the line, Ash can get her ult off in a matter of a second or two. This can allow her to use it very effectively on the fly, to initiate a fight, reposition, or even just escape a bad situation. With a really low cooldown at 2 minutes, you can be very active with this ability throughout the game, which gives you a lot of opportunity to make some very cool plays. You should always be on the lookout for good opportunities to use Phase Breach, as this is the primary strength in Ash's kit. Rather than holding the cooldown most of the game to only get one or two uses off, look to be active with its use, attempting to maximize your value throughout a match. All right guys, with an overview of Ash's kit out of the way, let's go over some key tips that can really help you take your Ash play to the next level. If you take these tips and apply them to your game, you will see just how strong this legend can truly be. But before we do that, do you actually know how strong you could be? If not, be sure to head over to ProGuides.com and consider taking your first coaching session. Many of us have bad habits that we don't even notice that if we fixed, would unlock our game entirely. And over there, you will find some of the top Apex players in the world, ready to help you step up your game instantly. Check it out in the description below. All right guys, so since Ash is new, I wanna start off by giving you five tips that me and the team have personally come together with through playing Ash for over a couple days. And where better to start than with her ultimate? The biggest tip I can give you with this ability is always look to portal out of enemies' line of sight and to high ground if possible. The last thing you want to do is get beamed as you exit the void. So make sure to always be conscious of where you're porting to. 
Getting quick flanks or angles is arguably the best use for this ability, but be careful that you're not getting too greedy and getting yourself killed in a 1v3. Remember, if you use Ash's portal, you have to commit, and there is no going back. High ground is the other super important positioning aspect of her ult for a ton of reasons. As you guys know by now, high ground in Apex is OP. It's tough for many legends to gain height quickly, but if you can, you have a much better angle for your gunfights and it makes using a lot of abilities and nades much easier to land. Most of the legends that can gain height quickly require a lot of time to do so or they make a lot of noise. Examples are Octane Pad, Horizon Lift, and Valk Jets. These can get you up to height really quick. However, they're pretty noisy and easily draw a ton of attention. And this right here is what's so great about Ash's portal. You can reposition to certain locations faster and more quietly than any other legend. While the distance isn't nearly as far as some other abilities in the game, its speed and subtlety are what makes it so powerful. Our next tip is to use Ash's passive for more than just hunting down kills. It's easy to just ping out some enemies and then tunnel on pushing them, but where this ability really shines is when you're constantly using any death box that you can gather info for your team. While there are a ton of instances where this can save your squad from a nearby lurking team or show you a few enemies to kill, in the later stages of the game, you should be looking to use this to gain info on the remaining squads on the map. Pinging enemies out and then using that info to help you make better rotations and plan out the last couple rings for your squad can be huge for this passive. And as I've told you guys before, information is king in Apex. And while this doesn't make Ash a full-on recon legend, it does add a little bit more info for your team while playing a movement legend. So for tip number three, this involves your arc snare. While this is really good at catching enemies by surprise, one great use for it is to use it in really close ranges. Let's say you're getting pushed by an enemy who's about to round a corner on you. This ability does not damage or CC you. So if you literally throw it at your feet as they're coming into close range, if it lands, the CC will make it much easier for you to land shots and will keep enemies from being able to perform much movement during the fight. While the tether doesn't really do a ton of damage, it does enable you to deal much more reliable damage. So try to get creative with how you use this ability. Also, looking to combine these abilities with other legends or nades can be absolutely huge. If you time an arc snare with a teammate's nade or skill, you can guarantee some serious damage. Just because this ability isn't crazy OP at first glance, do not sleep on the value of some good old fashioned crowd control. If you use the CC to gain advantages or just flat out deal more damage, then it might as well have a bunch of damage tacked on to the ability itself. Beyond just looking for good ultimates to make plays on your own, if you have coordination with your squad, you can get some pretty sweet combos with this ability. Taking the portal as a team with a Gibby, for example, lets you push someone and instantly bubble for defense. On the flip side, if you have a caustic, you can actually portal into enemy bubbles and throw your ult from the inside. Revenant's totem is sadly another cool combo here as well, giving you quick entry in your shadow form. This is a really nice one too, because enemies can't take the portal back to where you totem. So if you're sneaky about it, you can portal in totem form, reset, and then re-portal or heal without fear of being found. One thing to keep in mind here is the range capabilities are a lot lower than using a Wraith portal or even an Octane pad. So don't get caught putting your totem too close to the fight. Even portaling in with just a Mirage ult to cause mayhem or an instant seer ult to gain info can be really strong. Make sure to put a focus on using this portal with your squad if you can, because you can get way more bang for your buck than if you try to solo push a team and don't do any combos. So guys, in conclusion, Ash is looking to be pretty balanced here on release, and she seems to be a really cool addition to the roster. Personally, I think she has the absolute coolest intro cinematic in the game. And let me know in the comments below if you found any sweet techniques with her kit that we didn't mention here. If you're grinding the legend on release, I want to hear about it, so let me know in the comments below. Anyway, guys, drop a like if you enjoyed the video, and if you made it this far, make sure you're subbed and join on the grind with me here in Season 11. Anyway, guys, until next time, it's been Valued, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.